When it comes to public speaking, it's not necessarily how much time you spend preparing, it's how you use your prep time. So a couple of contrasts here. I do hear from people from time to time saying, oh, there's just not enough time to prepare, not enough time to prepare. But then I ask them what they did, and it turns out they may have spent dozens of hours of preparing their presentations. Now, that time is often writing bullet points on slides, rewriting bullet points, changing font size, adding logos, taking logos off. And folks, some of that has to be done, I guess, I understand. Having it go through a legal process, investor relations process, reviews, getting feedback, having other people add so. So fine to do all that. But here's what great speakers do. Great speakers put a line down the middle of the clock or the schedule and essentially put it in half. Half of your time is going to be preparing the creation of the presentation, but half of your time, your prep time, is going to be on polishing the delivery. I can tell you bad speakers never do this. They may spend 200 hours, but 100% of the time is on writing and rewriting and editing and futzing with slides, changing commas in scripts. Oh, we love to spend some time rehearsing, TJ. There's no time. Great speakers don't do that because they realize both sides of the equation are equally as important. Now, you can tell yourself, you can lie to yourself and say, oh, well, there's just no time. Baloney. If you have no time to rehearse, just cancel the speech. Steve Jobs was a pretty busy guy, starting a lot of companies, making Apple wildly successful, managing hundreds of thousands of them. Pretty busy guy, and yet he took the time to rehearse major speeches for days. Not just once for 20 minutes, not just for an hour, out days. I'm not saying you have to spend days rehearsing every speech, but don't kid yourself. You're not doing anything that much more important. You're not that much busier. Your social calendar isn't that much fuller as far as possibilities than Steve Jobs had, and yet he was able to practice for days. Ronald Reagan, President of the United States, Pretty busy job last time I checked. He would read his speech out loud, a major speech like the State of the Union. He would read it out loud three hours a night for a week to get familiar with it, comfortable with it. He then spent an entire day doing videotape rehearsal because he understood the actual words for one part, how you deliver it, delivering it with meaning and impact and emotion. That's the other part. You have to have both. You can't just take a boring generic speech or words out of a phone book and practice it and read it with emotion and that worked. No, that doesn't work. But you can't take the best written speech ever and sort of wing it or deliver it the first time out of your mouth and expect to have an impact. So that's really the big tip for the day, the big piece of advice. You've got to draw a line of, okay, there's no more writing and creating. We have to now spend some time rehearsing. If you don't do that, if you're staying up till three in the morning, rewriting that speech, you are guaranteeing failure. Put it, put it this way, if, if, if one part is 50% and the other part is 50%, you can be 100% of your 50% of the speech. If you're not rehearsing, that's gonna be a zero. That means you're highest you can do for your score for the speech is 50. Well, a 50 in any school I've ever been in is an F minus. Far better to get a 45 on the written content and a 45 on the delivery. That's a 90. That's an A or B in most schools. Please keep that in mind. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks for joining me. As always, this is brought to you by MediaTrainingWorldwide.com for all of your media and presentation training needs. If you haven't done this yet, please do so. Go to the site to sign up for the free online public speaking course at MediaTrainingWorldwide.com. Thanks again for joining me. May all of your presentation opportunities in life be a success.